Content Disclaimer The views expressed in this video are solely those of the host, collaborator, and contributor, and do not necessarily represent the views of Royal Productions OWC LLC. We encourage diverse perspectives and open dialogue. If you have any concerns, please contact us at info at royalproductionsowc.com. Thank you for being a part of the RPOWC community. And welcome to another episode of The Hybrid Files. This is episode eight, the commodification of entanglements. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, the most famous entanglement, Jada's entanglement. Now, everybody talks about Jada and everybody's talking about Will. And I just want to talk about the mindset that would enable someone to engage with another person as if they are the solution to a problem, only their internal processes can address. We are in a store, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, sirs and ladies. We are in a store. And you know, celebrities are just as susceptible to the psychological conditioning of commodification as anybody else. It does not discriminate across, uh, you know, class. It goes, it's, it's expansive. If you got a human psyche, you, you can be fucked with. Okay. So this is what I see. And then I'll delve into the more popular um conversations about that but the commodification of entanglement now let's see hmm. you have to see another human being who's just as as complex as you just as multi-dimensional as you multi-aspected has various unique uh diversities going on within them within their own person right but you're going through some things and you see them as a solution, a fix, a salve, a feel good for a moment, for a time. Hmm? And there's the matter of the mental state of Mr. Alcina. Alcina, however you pronounce his name, right? I mean, he was technically an adult. But his mental state was, put him at a vulnerable position. And allegedly, um, this is all allegedly on his part and allegedly on her part. But allegedly, she took advantage of that. And I'm very staunch on inappropriate uh, behavior with children. And I'm wondering when that was i i might have to look that up i i don't know if i'm interested in jada and will like that to look that up there's a lot has been said about it already but it's inappropriate to project onto someone to the point of applying behavior that says you know I would, you know, like to engage with you beyond um, the initial awareness that you have um, a type of mental processing going on that may demonstrate that there's some wavy waters in your mental health. I'll put it that way, since we don't know, right? I don't know we just know that's what's been said by various third parties fourth parties articles and outlets right and so when you as a person has been approached 
to help someone or be some type of uh, beacon in a foggy mental space and you see um, and you yourself are in a foggy mental space and you see um, their existence and way that they are are appearing before you as a light in the beacon of thick fog, thick, dark fog, thick, dark mental fog, right? Wavy mental health, right? And so you're older, there's an age dynamic, that's a layer. You know, she was suffering from some type of, allegedly suffering from some type of uh, depression. And Mr. Alcina was uh, suffering from some type of uh, mental, um, I guess, depression, allegedly. And they, as two adults with a varying age arenas and decided to uh, get together and the public is literally like flabbergasted because how can you do that you were married and how could you do that to will um isn't will in his 50s isn't jada in her 50s i don't know i don't know how old they are i just know they ain't children they're not 17 year olds 18 year olds they're not underage at all when these uh, occurrences uh, come about. Now, Mr. Alcina is the friend of her son, which means he's more in the age arena of her son than her. And it's come out, you know, they're, they've been separated. They don't really have a relationship in which a bond can be broken at least at the time of this entanglement, right? And uh, yeah, things happen like they happen with intention and purpose. <laughs> allegedly, allegedly. Right? It's intention and purpose, allegedly. And uh, you find yourself in a situation and entanglement. Because, you know, you feel in a kind of way, you're not feeling the best. He feel in a kind of way, he not feeling the best. Two people come together and they find some type of solution within each other's fog. You, they have, he has a fog, she has a fog. They just two, you know, ships in the fog and they happen to ding each other's boat. Okay. Okay. So you have to see somebody a certain kind of way to do that, but I don't know if I absolve Mr. Alcina unless he was a child and I don't know the facts. I, pr I probably don't know the facts. That's why I don't want to really talk about them, but the commodification of entanglement is, from the public's point of view, is something to talk about get real passionate about as if it's your life or your family member or somebody you care about. But these are parasocial relationships, by the way. We don't know Jada. We don't know Will. We don't know Mr. Alcina. We don't know that these people. We don't know them. But oh boy, their behavior and what they find themselves into, boy, do we feel entitled, don't we? We feel entitled, betrayed. We feel... um um backstabbed we feel judgment we feel dis i don't know if we feel disappointment i know that a lot of people as express can we feel a little bit tired and exhausted this is the current feeling but when the entanglement came out it was shock and like uh, a lot of feeling sorry for um mr smith because you know he's a child too i guess at least that's the way everybody acts like he a child and she just took advantage of him and she been taking advantage of him ever since that is not that teacher and that young boy that y'all are confused she passed away and he he's still kind of a little lost like this wasn't good no it wasn't good but entanglements right 
Now that was an inappropriate the teacher and the boy, the 14, 15 year old student. That was not an entangled. That was an inappropriate relationship with a minor by an adult who engaged him and took advantage of his not fully formed brain yet, but his raging hormones. So I don't think it's an entanglement. Entanglement, to me, that word connotates a type of whimsical, oh, it kind of happened and I moved hither and he moved thither and we've sort of gotten our life cords all wrapped up in each other. We don't know how it happened. Okay. But I mean, the public really is invested, was invested in that whole thing, or we felt that we were forced to witness something we don't want to witness. I mean, there's factions within the whole, um, <laughs> within the whole reaction. It's a parasocial relationship. We don't know these people, and these people do not care about us. <laughs> Clearly, <laughs> they don't give two shits. <laughs> and, you know, I, I really don't care about it. It's just that the idea that you are so unconscious in your conscious life, you are literally sleepwalking through your life to the point where you see solutions in convenient places that may not be the best place to find solutions, but you want, but you're beleaguered, you're, um, uh, you're exhausted, you have no energy, you feel down on yourself, your your low, low your self esteem is in the, on the floor. And you just want, like she said, she just wanted to feel good for a moment in time. She wanted to feel good, right? And Mr. Alcina, you know, he felt a little kind of way about how the public was perceiving him and how it was uh, spoken about that maybe it made him look like he was a homewrecker when he was not because they really weren't, weren't together, right? And everybody's feeling sorry for Will, like he a child and he not, like he a little boy. Y'all projecting a lot of y'all stuff. I just want you to, to know that y'all projecting on this couple. You do not know these people and these people do not know you, nor do they care to know you. Okay. Truth be told, they do not care to know you. They like what you have given them, but they do not care to know you. Hmm? Okay. So, you have entanglements, but that word, it has something baked in it to make it not have consequence about what you do, how you engage, how you approach, what your intentions are. Are you moving with purpose? What type of purpose? Because everybody, every time you say the word purpose, people uh, all, always give it some lofty meaning. It's like, no, devil has purpose. Devil has people who love them. So like Tina Turner said, well, love got to do with it. And what kind of purpose are you talking about? Right? You make a lot of assumptions. When people say those words, right? And she, you know, I don't, I don't fault Jada for being a human being and being depressed and looking for some type of comfort somewhere uh, that she didn't feel she could get from her husband because they were, they were, they were separate. But I mean, this is just me. People really do <laughs> take the breakup so seriously. Um, with the exception of domestic violence and all the dark stuff on the spectrum of marriage, I'm talking about regular, there's no violence. It just doesn't work out. And so it just doesn't work out. 
And so you break apart, but you break apart with this idea that, you know, y'all can get back together again. It's not a foregone conclusion. Y'all could circle back. I think we really do put a lot on the um, legal um, state or status of marriage because there's so much, talking about entanglements, there's a lot of projection, expectation, um, wish fulfillment, um, you know, fantasy and romantic feelings and just placed upon the status of being married you get your identity you can assume an identity that way right um as far as having a product called in entanglements it, it literally <laughs> that word it just <laughs> it just really tries and soften soften something that maybe shouldn't be received as soft because my idea of you being in a marriage is that you have an understanding and from that understanding should come all of the good romantic feelings because you now have uh, a consortium of sorts between two two perspectives that are now have gone through the work of being placed in sync, right? And you, hopefully communication is a part of that dynamic. And hopefully you feel that you can go to each other, even when the other person is the problem you need to talk about. You hope that you can go to them in that instance. And and they, they, being Jada and Will did not feel that they were available for that. They were actually separate. So she felt free, free to be with someone else. But the public says you where you went was inappropriate. You know, because, you know, celebrities live for us. And we live for celebrity. But the fact that an entanglement came up, that word is just so like, let me soften some of this hard shit I've been doing. Let me soften that shit. I'm going to call it an entanglement. No, it wasn't an entanglement. I mean, it was a, there was conscious action happening. Entanglement to me connotates there was some unconscious things going on. Now I understand being under the weight of depression. I get that part, that part I get, but to the point where like, I am going to do this thing and then I'm going to say I was not fully intending to do, it's like you wanted something, you wanted to feel good. I don't think that's a nefarious um, desire is very human. For someone who may feel lonely, unappreciated, unseen, she's a woman. She's a fairly pretty woman. She's petite. She's had kids. She has a complex, complex marriage with a man who has very specific things going on with him as well. Very specific things that he has come out in the open and has spoke about those very specific things and um, we know about how the their whole relationship culminated and how her mother you know uh, applied pressure to for them to get married and Veda did not want to get married allegedly that's that's what's been said she doesn't didn't want to get married but because her mother made a stink like crying uh, she said okay fine and she was pregnant at the time she was un physically uncomfortable at the time I'm sure she felt pressure all the way around and we usually have high ideas about people's situations that for them are highly pressurized and since we're not feeling the pressure we have all of this Monday morning uh, quarterbacking going on about their lives that we're not a part of that we don't feel the pressure about okay all right there's that and so and so um uh, I think 
the thing about the entanglement and the fact that it was such um, a, an aghast moment for people who see themselves in a para parasocial relationship with Jada and Smith, Will Smith, if at all, um, they they are invested. And they believe that they have some type of stake or or um, skin in the game because it's really projecting about, well, how could you do this? Can't you just do this, that, and the other? And it's like, I'm listening to people talk about this. It's like, y'all are really entitled to somebody who don't give two shits about you. You feel real entitled to their life as far as they need to do this and they need to do that because you this, that, and you this, that, and you this, that. And it's like... Well, um, hmm. What type of mindset, number one, feels entitled to the information in someone else's life that they have no part in? They just view it online. Like the whole uh, entanglement of blue facing. What is it? Her Chris, Christian or Christian or something? People real stiff. That's an entanglement. And this woman did not for a, a long time. It was just viewed that she did not want to let him go. He could treat her like shit. She did not want to let him go. But she also has allegedly some other stuff going on with her and her background and her dynamic of her family. But she found herself entangled in something. And it was a commodity. She sees that blue face as a commodity as blue face sees her as a commodity. He gets influence. He gets eyeballs. He gets uh, views. He gets uh, people who, you know, come over to his page and look at the updates for him in his life. Right. And then the script flips and then she's not the one that's being negatively looked at. She's the one that's uh, finally got the revelation and saying, this is not good. I have a baby. Let me go do my thing. Right. But they're, they're entangled. I mean, they have a child. To be entangled into something <laughs> is to assume assume there is a level of unconscious conscious behavior there's a level of i am moving on autopilot and this myopic view or very finite thing i perceive to have some type of value i'm going to engage in it and get and hopefully i get what i want from it it's literally a a, a way to uh enmesh yourself into another person's agenda without like did you did you check to see what you were getting out of it besides tale you were curious about because when it comes to like blue face and that chick it's like what is she getting out of this she's getting something out of it human beings don't do this unless they're getting something out of it. Now, whether she's voiced it or not, whether she's been to therapy and voiced it to herself or voiced it to her therapist, I, I don't know that. You don't know that. But it is an entanglement that is sold to us as a, as a, as a form of distraction because these people don't care about us. And truth be known, we only care about them because they're entertaining to watch. Their drama is entertaining to watch. The, the movers and the shakers in the uh, realm of reality TV know that, okay, this could be something that people might want to see or quote unquote, the way they're afraid that people might want to learn from. Don't you want to show people how to, how to do A, B, and C? Don't you want people to learn from your mistakes? Hmm. Hmm. But the commodification of entanglement is literally, I'm, I'm talking to the audience, people who consume this. And I'm like, obviously, it's a product. It's a product that, that got a name from, from the people, from the person that was mainly uh, involved in it. And uh, she tried to def define it. And Will came in to correct her and said, an entanglement? 
you had an affair. You had a whole full-blown relationship. That was not an entanglement. Like, people try and make something lighter than what it is. It's very heavy. You had a heavy uh, emotion called the... Well, I don't know if it's an emotion, but it's a mental state. You had you were going through something. You had some depression, and he had some things going on with him. And in the moment, you felt kindred. You felt connected, and you crave this because I suspect if you are in this state of I don't have this, then I'm wondering what did what what were y'all doing? What were y'all doing? You were kind of just in it and just went, had a separate life, which, you know, when there's money, you can have any type of life that you want. You can configure it any way you want because there's money, right? There's also a lot of money in that marriage. There's a lot of assets in that marriage. There's just a lot. Um, I just don't think the product of entangle entanglement or the commodification of entanglement for our consumption is anything that does any good for us except show us that people are human being at the end of the day. They're, they have certain mindsets about things. And, they, and ultimately, you got two people who don't want to be seen as bad guys by the public. They want they don't want they don't want to see be seen as bad guys, right? So you get this type of language to come up. And it's really it's really language that tricks the mind into thinking either something is not as important as you say it or as it feels that it is, or it, it, the way you say something kind of, you know, tricks the mind into thinking, oh, it wasn't that bad because you're using soft language to describe something that's not so soft, which is uh, from the audience point of view, from the those who are consuming this type of uh, reality TV and uh, celebrity behavior. Um, they might thrive off of that product being enmeshed parasocially with people who they will never meet and who will never see them as their equal. So you have essentially um, you have a a type of dynamic between someone who really shouldn't be involving himself with anybody and neither should she but in those moments you don't she, they, they you know they're people they don't want to be by themselves so they and she said she just wanted to feel good I, and i guess mr alcina was the one to make her feel good right i mean ultimately she did put the his um contact information in that slot as well so that he can get it and have it right but as far as um being uh, kind of indoctrinated about entanglement situationships uh all of the ships that can be pulled into something to define it because there's really no definition. Uh, you're not serious about them. They're not serious about you. You just find yourself together. And you find yourself in an entanglement, a situationship. And that you don't really care that much about. But the way human beings work when they are especially f getting physical, even though you may not like or love this person, your body is slowly becoming attached to them. Some might call it soul ties. I, I just call it a chemical reaction between a man and a woman that happens regardless of how you actually feel about them because sex is a is an entanglement in and of itself. I mean, some people really believe they can trip and fall on it. 
and oops, there was an entanglement. As if you fell and got, you know, trapped in a whole bunch of extension cords. Like, I don't understand how this happened. You don't understand how you approach. You don't understand how relationships work, how innuendo and innocent flirtation and your, you know, you don't understand how that works. You understand how that works. Everybody understands how that works. If if they've gotten through puberty, they know how that works. None, nothing about that requires any type of degree or special intelligence. You just like looking and and feeling and and vibing and connecting and Next thing you know, you're doing and doing and doing it well, right? Okay. The commodification of that entanglement, wow. I don't even think Miss Jada understood that her marketing was <laughs> just entanglement. <laughs> Why you gotta soften the language? It is what it is. You did what you did, and the world was under the impression that y'all were together because y'all said y'all together. And it's really none of our business that they're together or not together. It, it's a very rude inquiry to say, "Hey, what you doing and who you doing it with and how you doing it? Mm, what you doing? Who you doing and how you doing it? It's none of our business. That entail that entanglement stuff." is an entitlement of the audience i have to, i have to say that now you feel very entitled to information that's none of your business that whole entanglement was given to us and it was none of our business and i guess the whole idea of the red table is to have some form where you can talk about issues that are very serious but for the most part, now people are kind of tired of hearing about her stuff. And it, I mean, maybe she should start talking about other people's stuff and that maybe that would have softened the, the, the backlash. But I just don't understand why people are so invested in this marriage that they're not that invested in. Like, I don't think they're going to get a divorce. I have people in my circle who think they're going to get divorced. But Will said he don't do divorce. But he did divorce once. And then he pursued Jada, even though Jada had other feelings about being married. This is another thing I want. We want, I want to address. It goes back to the relationship. People be projecting shit on you. And it got shit to do with you. Will projected something onto Jada. Jada was not interested. And he said, I'm going to have this woman. This woman, my woman. And it's like, well, how is that her fault? She could have said, no, but you know how men are. We, we women, we know how men are, especially when they're very persistent. They want to wear you down. And they say that shit. And then all of a sudden, it's your fault. Because you never were interested. How that work? How that work? How how is it that we as an audience become entitled to something that we are actually in the power of projecting upon someone else? Now I know she brought in the red table talk and she started talking about her her stuff, but I thought it was given into in, in the spirit of let's explore deep conversations and but I would guess it was too much about her so you know people are tired of that because they got they feel a kind of way about that entanglement thing <laughs> so now they don't like her or they never liked her or they were always suspicious of her but you y'all gotta realize Will and Jada been entangled for a long time because Will said he ain't divorcing this is you know he said this he's been talking way longer than she been talking and she said she's fine with whatever you think about her as long as she can make some money off of it and making money well, i don't even know if the book did well or not but as long as she can have an opportunity to make money off it she's fine with it like think whatever you want just keep giving me the ducats 
Because this is her life. This is her life. But that's another episode. I keep saying that this is it's really going to be a juicy episode because it's like we they are they are products. And celebrities know that that they're participating in product promotion and them being the product the the veneer the the presentation the the pageantry of it all right that's the product and they they just want to make money right they want to make money off of you and you're in a parasocial relationship taking it seriously are you in an entanglement with a celebrity and don't even know it and they don't i know they don't know it they understand the dynamic maybe but do you understand the dynamic that you are in an entanglement with celebrity hmm? and you actually see it as a a commodity because you feel very entitled to behavior as if it personally affects you it does not i know you you don't have to listen to what she's saying. You don't. The minute she comes up, you can click away. You don't have to sit there. I mean, unless your your for you page, your algorithm of the app that you're dealing with is just fucking obnoxious, and you told them five times and they just ignored you, then that's the algorithm. You need to go talk to them. Give them some bad feedback. If you don't get this stuff out of my face, that's all you got to say. If you don't get this stuff out of my face, they're going to take that seriously and get that stuff out of your face. You'll probably never see Jada again in your for you page on coming across your little algorithm. Entitlement. I just, I just come upon and, and I, and I feel in these, in this tangled ball of extension cords and I find myself entangled. I mean, that to me, that's what in the word entanglement connotates is that there's some type of unconsciousness going on. Nobody's unconscious. Everybody was wide awake just doing the do. Doing what you do when you're looking for something to feel good, make you feel good. I just just want you to make me feel something. <laughs> make me feel something. Okay, I ain't gonna fault her for you want to be feeling something. I guess you can, but do you have do you have to choose your sons, people? You couldn't go out nowhere. Hey, Mark Antony was feeling you. Um, some other dudes that were feeling you could have found them. They weren't. It was gone. Thrill was gone. But anyway, it's your business. It ain't my business. What the fuck do I know? <laughs> you wanna do it? Do it. They won't let you in, okay. But I, I don't know. I I don't know what the timing is also. I can't say that Mr. Alcina wasn't a child. I hope he wasn't a child when she did this. I hope he was an adult. Maybe he was like 25. Close to her son's age. Which means, I mean, he's an adult now. He's not a child child. He's not under age. But he was pretty young. And if this was a male, female, we would be, what are you doing? Kind of, ooh, what are you doing? So we looking at her and going, what are you doing? An entanglement? So you didn't know the extension, the pile of extension cords were there? You just kind of walked through and found yourself wrapped around with the extension cords? They, they, they were alive? Like... That's, I mean, that's what I'm thinking when you say entanglement. There was some type of unconscious activity and behavior, and you found yourself surrounded by emotions that you did not know were so strong, like an, in a telenovela. Like you were, you, were you in your own personal telenovela, girl? Whatever. Okay. I, I mean, I just really, I don't understand uh, the focus on her as if she's in the marriage and puppeteering the whole marriage by herself. That is a grown man and nobody, and I, I pick up uh, that nobody tells Will Smith what to do uh, when he, and especially if he don't want to do it. You, you, do you think he's mentally delayed or something? You think he's, you know, special? And he can't really register subtleties and nuance. 
Y'all think that? I mean, he's the one that corrected her when he heard the word entanglement. I mean, he did say entanglement. Girl, you better be honest and clean that up. Be Just be honest. Just be honest. Don't be trying soft language. Just entanglement. I mean, I don't know. I don't see. I don't understand what people want to see in a relationship, except what I talked about in the commodification of relationship. I think it was our sec second video. And people are really commodified in their mind about relationships. It should look like this. They should do this. This and that. Yeah, these are two unique human beings as unique as a fingerprint. As unique as a fucking fingerprint. And they have to fit a mold that literally is a manufactured mold. They literally, that is their job is to pretend for you and to present veneer and a, 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 a shellac of perfection and you want to take that shit seriously that's that's the thing it's like you know they playing but you take it seriously like they really are not lying to you like it's their 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 performers entertainers it's literally their job is to tell you a fucking story that's their job that's how they make money that's how they extract money from you is telling you stories is she not a storyteller is he not a storyteller isn't that what you, aren't you entertained as as the gladiator would say are you not entertained but that's, that's i'm not gonna keep you with this <laughs> i'm not gonna keep you with this um you know i hope you uh, <laughs> i hope you enjoyed this <laughs> Uh, episode about the commodification of entanglements. So what a word, what a word. <laughs> what a situation to apply a word. I swear that's that celebrity look at just being in the effects of the commodified mind and just say, I'm going to use this word and it's going to apply perfectly. And it's like, no, nah, but nah, I'm not going to let you get away with that, Jada. Entanglement. Girl, bye. <laughs> You was just in a football relationship with somebody that may have been age, age inappropriate or vicinity inappropriately. Because why are you dating your son's children? Uh, friends, why are you doing that? That's weird. Yeah. It's weird. I don't know. Nah. Like, uh, you can't find nobody else. You can't find nobody else. You can find anybody else. One, you're a woman. Two, you're a chick. And three, you got money. You could have found a whole bunch of people that could have made you feel a kind of way and nobody would have cared one way or another. They probably would have been grateful that you had something and didn't. we didn't know at this particular point. <laughs> but I'm going to keep going. I got to stop. Let's say it. <laughs> but, uh, I hope you enjoyed this little, little short episode <laughs> about the commodification of entanglement, y'all. It's like <laughs> parasocial relationships. Apparently, they there. It's a real phenomenon, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. <laughs> <laughs> entanglement. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Like you know, what's your opinion? Yeah, if you're not tired about it <laughs> and put your comments in the comment section about what you feel about the word and take a bit the whole idea that you could just put a fancy word on something that's just yeah. like i'm side eyeing this situation but this is the language you're gonna use about it okay all right there's a lot of soft language of inappropriately applied how, how about that uh comment like and share Share your opinions, counter or otherwise. And, um, you know, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the commodification of entanglement of the hybrid fell season one. Happy galaxy. Wow.